So many videos ago now, I promised a video on the sinking of the Felicity Ace, a roll-on, roll-off cargo carrier ship that sank in 2022. Well, today, that promise is being fulfilled. This video is basically just a sequel to my video about the MV Cougar Ace. So hello everyone, I hope you're doing good and are ready to hear a story. Not gonna be a romance story to rival Titanic or anything, but if you like sinking ships, you're in the right place. If you enjoy these kinds of stories, check out my video on the capsizing of the MV Cougar Ace, my deep dive into the disappearance of the SS Waratah, my video about the sinking of the Princess Alice, and my video about the scariest ghost ship in history, the Orang Madan, and my several other videos about maritime mysteries and stories. I have a whole series dedicated to ships which have disappeared. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content so that I know you want more of it, and let's not waste any time. Let's start with the backstory of the Felicity Ace. First, let's have a look at the ship's design. Felicity Ace was designed for the dedicated task of carrying vehicles, cars and trucks in most cases, across the ocean. She was 656 feet long, her beam was 106 feet rounded up, her dead weight was 17,738 metric tons, and her internal volume was measured at 60,118 gross tons. Her call sign was 3ECX4. She was laid down on December 9, 2004, launched on July 2, 2005, and completed in October 5th of that year. She was registered in Panama but built in Japan. Her owners were the Mitsu Corporation, the same company from the video we did about the similar ship in the Cougar Ace. Now, looking at the picture on screen, Spino, can you please move? Thanks, bud. I love ships in general, but I find the the boxy kind of look that these RO RO carriers have is just satisfying to look at. They're nice and compact looking with nice colors. They're just nice looking ships. It'd be really cool to see the inside of one. Felicity Ace's power came from a single main diesel engine rated at 20,500 horsepower. That's a lot of horses. Good thing we don't need them to pull ships across the ocean. That'd be a long swim. With that high horsepower, Felicity Ace could travel at a speed of 22.3 knots or 26 miles per hour rounded up. Her propulsion was through a one screw single shaft. Felicity Ace was delivered to Mitsui OSK Lines in Tokyo on October 5, 2005, registered under the ownership of Aurora Car Maritime Transport under the Panama flag. After 2011, throughout 2022, her registered owner was Snowscape Car Carriers SA, but she remained under Mitsui OSK Line Management. Her career from late 2005 until 2022 was, from what I can find, pretty uneventful and productive. However, an event would occur on board the Felicity Ace in 2022, which would be her death sentence. And let's get to what that was right now. While sailing from Germany in early February 2022, carrying within her a cargo of 3,965 Volkswagen Group cars, which included 1,944 Audis, 1,117 Porsches, 85 Lamborghinis, and 189 Bentley model cars, disaster would strike the Felicity Ace. Six days after leaving Germany, on February 16th, 2022, a fire broke out within her cargo hold. Oh no, it's the Orang Madan all over again. Felicity Ace was sailing in the North Atlantic Ocean at the time, and a battle to save her began. A fire at sea is no joke. Seriously, a fire at sea can cause a ship to sink. It won't just burn the superstructure, but not damage the hull. If it's bad enough, it can and will sink the ship. The crew quickly realized that they couldn't put the fire out, so whatever efforts they initially had were quickly stopped, and they abandoned ship. All 22 of them were all rescued leaving the Felicity Ace to her smoldering fate. The Felicity Ace floated abandoned and aflame, but she didn't sink. If a ship could fight to survive, I'm sure the Felicity Ace was giving it her all. As she burned, the Portuguese Navy rescued her crew. Lithium-ion batteries in some of the electric 
cars and the ship were reportedly what caused the fire having ignited unexpectedly. And they could also apparently only be extinguished with special equipment. However, there is no proof for certain that this is actually what caused the fire, though this was an early theory put forward and even reported on by the media. The loss from the cargo is estimated to be between 334 million and 401 million US dollars. As the ship continued drifting following her abandonment, probably glowing in the night and being hidden by a cloud of smoke in the day, she was followed for 110 miles by a Portuguese Navy patrol ship. Attempts were made to extinguish the fire and tow the ship ashore before she could founder. I'm sure her going down was a major worry. On February 18th, eight days after the Felicity Ace left Germany, salvage company Smith Salvage was contracted to salvage the ship. Tugboats with firefighting equipment were brought in, along with additional salvage craft and more firefighting equipment also joining. And these all set out for the ship after being assembled. By the 23rd, the Felicity Ace was still afloat. And I don't know if she was ever boarded again during this time frame by even a skeleton crew or a salvage crew or a firefighting crew. I didn't see anything about her being board, boarded up to this point. But I imagine that someone might have been sent on board to make sure the fire had burnt at least to a manageable level. The Portuguese Navy, however, did doubt that the ship could be towed due to her sheer size. The Felicity Ace continued to burn and drift guideless in the Atlantic Ocean for another week. She was finally boarded again at last by a salvage team from Smith, who were able to stabilize her. The fire had either burnt out or was extinguished by this time as well, and things were finally looking up for the ship. She'd seemingly won her fight for survival, and a tow line was rigged to take her back to shore for repairs. Things did not stay so positive, though. In fact, they abruptly took a turn for the worst. As if the fire wasn't bad enough, things only got worse from there. Less than a month after the fire, news broke out that the Felicity Ace had capsized from the damage. Not only that, she reportedly sank shortly after as well, on March 1st, 2022. I hope no one was on board at that time, but no one died during this whole thing, so if anyone was, it seems that they got off the ship safely. Felicity Ace had finally lost her fight, though. She developed a 45-degree list to starboard prior to capsizing. She went down in rough seas at around 9 a.m., roughly 220 miles from Azores, an autonomous region of Portugal in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm guessing that, unlike with the Cougar Ace, where the cargo was recovered, this ship took all the cars she had on board with her to the bottom of the ocean, if any had even been salvageable following the fire. It is unknown if any oil pollution, contamination, or spill occurred from the sinking. Reportedly, oily residue was left behind on the surface after she went down, at least according to the Portuguese Navy. The situation's severity has not really been determined, though, from what I've read. At the sinking site, the water was 10,000 feet deep, and as far as I know, her wreck has not been discovered. Her end was not a gentle one. Her final month afloat was filled with calamity after calamity. Hopefully, she at least rests somewhere that is calm and quiet on the ocean floor, perhaps providing a home to sea life. A peaceful image is nice to imagine, especially after such a tumultuous end. She rests on the same ocean floor that is the final home to ships like the SS Pacific, and the RMS Titanic, and the MS Hans Hentoff, and the MS Mucan, and so many more. So, even on the ocean floor, in the dark, she's not truly alone. It's just kind of beautiful in a way that all those ships now rest together on the same ocean floor. So, that was the story of the fire on and the loss of the Felicity Ace. It was a shorter topic today, but I hope you enjoyed the video and found the story interesting. You wonderful viewers always seem to really enjoy the videos of maritime incidents and missing ships, so I hope this was another good, good listen for y'all. I always enjoy making these videos. I love stories of shipwrecks and those kinds of topics. They're some of my favorites to cover. I have a whole series of ships being lost at sea, actually. 
and I'll link the playlist in the description of the video if you want to check them out. Well, that wraps up this story. Thanks for watching. Hope you stay tuned for the next video. We're going back to prehistoric times for this one to cover an early Tyrannosaur genus from the early Cretaceous, the Dawn Tyrant Eotyrannus. Hope to see you for that one. I'm looking forward to finally talking about a dinosaur again. Get your bus tickets, everyone, and I'll meet you at the bus stop in the early Cretaceous at about 131 to 126 million years ago. Might be a bit of a commute to our destination, so I'll let you pack your bags for the trip. Have a good one, everyone.